Samuel Gray has said that the future is imagined, planned and built. In 1948 in Britain, we imagined that we could deliver healthcare to the entire population free at the point of care, and the National Health Service was planned and built. Our plan is a service which will provide the best medical advice and treatment for everyone, every man, woman and child in this country. It will cover any medicines you may need, specialist advice, and of course hospital treatment, whatever the illness. Special care for mothers and children, and a lot of other things besides. We now have the world's largest publicly funded health service, with improvements made in waiting times, quality, efficiency, safety and patient experience. However, we have an ageing population and unsustainable costs, so what will the future look like? I'm Abigail Harrison and I'm going to the IHI Forum in Orlando. I want to use this opportunity to ask fellow healthcare improvers to help us imagine a future that we can plan and build together. So, imagine that you're 20 years in the future. 20 years? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'll that be looks like, like almost 50. Yeah. Whoa, Beach. 20 years, okay. Yeah. I hope I'm still alive in 20 years. I'm going to be retirement age. Yes. I'll be dead. You're be dead. <laughs> you will be 20 years older, but it's okay, because healthcare outcomes have improved beyond all current expectations. Patient experience is 100%, and the cost of healthcare is reduced. Now I want you to think, what has made this drastic improvement possible? I think if I was to say one thing uh, that helped us get there, it would be technology. I think that um, there's a lot of technology available now that can improve our patient experience and patient safety. I can get my bank account details over the, over the phone, over the internet, wherever I want to be, whenever I want it. And I cannot get my healthcare information. I cannot contact my healthcare professional when I want to. I'm looking to see if I can own my whole own health record. I'm looking to see if I can have an iPad visit with my consultant. So do you think there is anything, any particular technologies or innovations that might get us to a, a better place? I'm not sure about technologies and innovations. I think getting back to basics, basically, in, in surgery. Uh, we see, we've seen the development of the Da Vinci robot system and different technologies. I, I'm not sure that those are really the future. I, I think maybe the future is stepping back and going back to basics and surgery. Why don't you tell me how we got there? How do we get there? Well, I think applying what we know already reliably and consistently. Twenty years ago, when I was a young thing, uh, I really looked at to uh, the healthcare system to give me all those answers. Now I look to the technology. I, th I think one of the things that's going to make a difference in the future is empowering patients to have control of their own data. So the, the biggest thing I, I think that's going to change the future of healthcare is digital, about giving power to patients so that they can, uh, they can own their own health records and they can provide the information that they know about themselves and to, um, uh, and to give that to, uh, to the people that they're asking to, uh, to care for them or, or treat them. So I think that transfer of power is going to be uh, by far and away the, the biggest thing that we do. Right now, we have a system that has central control over decision making of healthcare activities, treatments, diagnoses, centered in the medical profession. And I think in the future, as technology allows us to have better control of our data and tracking our own performance, that we'll be able to have the patient actually diagnose themselves, look at the data, and be able to report back to the physician what I'm doing, where I'm going. I'm starting to see an elevation in my blood pressure, my blood sugar. And here's what I think should happen, not what you think should happen. Excellent. Okay? I believe you, I'm convinced. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so here we are in uh, 2033. Wherever the patient is, we meet them where they are and we deliver what they want in a way that they can use it so that we're truly a patient and person driven. I'm now in charge of my healthcare. I know much more about what good health care looks like. My uh, doctors and pharmacists and nurses know what my preferences are uh, and I have all the technology to hand 
that means that I can look after myself. Uh, so what got us there? All right, let me just think for a moment. Um... Concentrated on what happens to patients, not just inside the hospital, but outside, I think. So, there are many things that can transform healthcare, but the one that I'm most seized with at the moment is bringing patients and families into collaborative partnership with those who provide their care and service. Because, together, they can figure it out. I think in the future that patients would keep their own blood pressure, their own blood sugars, and they would report to the doctor. Can you tell me how you think we got there? I think we'll have got there by listening to people and listening to what's important to them. Our doctor's happy to give up that um, pedestal on which we are sitting at the moment uh, and say that, um, you know, here's a part of the control back to you because it's your life and in your head. Excellent. That was a very oh good answer. Goodness. That was really good. That was good. I would imagine that people would want to have care that was brought to where they were rather than having to go to institutions to receive it, for example. Yeah, the single most powerful thing that transformed healthcare was bringing patients into the room, into the discussion, and redistributing the power back to patients. So in order to improve healthcare, we embraced new technologies, empowered patients with their own data, and focused on patient-centered care. But what else did we do? I know already what the answer to that is. We engaged the community and they delivered it for themselves. And we, we realized that it wasn't about inside a single system. So we realized it wasn't about healthcare buildings and healthcare, healthcare cathedrals of research and discovery. We realized the actual work is when you combine all those elements of society together all on a single purpose and the, the earliest work is an attempt to try and do that so housing criminal justice education health no nobody in the real world draws distinctions between these elements only in our systems do we do we say we have a health system and an education system in reality they impact on families every day in multiple ways the main transition is to start to focus on health well-being and home instead of hospitals procedures and, and intervention I envision the future of healthcare wherein sectorial boundaries are lifted and the the whole concept of health and healthcare is revolutionized to incorporate all determinants of health. More excitingly I think what we've done is actually truly engaged the patient in what we do and patients and um, the public in looking after their health. So we've gone much more into um, population health and actually working with uh, populations at an earlier stage so that actually we're helping people to manage their own health care. So actually hospital care is still part of the, the process but it's a much smaller part of the process now. How do you use the healthcare system to actually improve the population's health as an entirety? So we know that about 80% of people go to see their doctor every year so we have access to a large portion of the population. But I think we don't use the information from that, that we learn from that, to actually improve the community so that the problems that our patients are experiencing are largely because of where they actually live, work, play, right? But we don't pay any attention to that in the clinical setting. What kind of work can we do over the next 20 years to, to make an impact on social determinants of health and to reduce racial and ethnic disparities in healthcare. But if we really were to focus on people and their health and what they really want and need, we would have the opposite agenda. Let's empty our hospitals, make our machines idle, and keep people home where they want to be. That's the fundamental transition. And I think that we'll do it by working together. Um, I think if we continue to work as not in partnership, then there is absolutely no way we can achieve that. We need to switch the mentality of healthcare so instead of staying busy and doing what it's doing, it's trying to prevent the need for its own, its own use. I think the reason we got there was because eventually we decided that the outcome of healthcare should be health. And uh, so when we did that, we started asking ourselves, how do you use the healthcare system to actually improve the population's health as an entirety? I'm sure that with new technologies, a revolution in patient-owned data, and a focus on patient-centered care, we can drastically improve healthcare. But this isn't just about healthcare. In order to do the best by our citizens, we must also focus on improving health. 
I'm convinced that if we combine improvements in healthcare with a focus on prevention and reducing health inequalities, we can not only imagine a better NHS, but we can plan and build it together.